Hi everyone, it's Giovanni from Breakpoint in Lisbon. Today I have the pleasure to be joined by Tegan Klein, the founder of Edge and Node. How are you doing, Tegan? I'm doing well, thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure for us. How are you enjoying the conference so far? It's been great. A lot of really great energy here at the Breakpoint conference around Solana and exciting times in the blockchain space. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to talk to you about a very um, important topic right now, which is the topic of the metaverse. So I know that you are involved uh, in this uh, discussion about what is uh, the metaverse and about uh, what it means for the future of cryptocurrency in general, for the future of humanity. Um, we heard that uh, Facebook uh, uh, rebranded itself uh, into Meta. And so um, now there is a lot of discussion about it, about what it means for you. It's a bad or a good thing that uh, Facebook uh, uh, is trying to get into this metaverse discussion. Yeah, I mean, listen, I've been in the blockchain space for six years now, and so it's great validation. I think it's this is the trend, right? A lot of Web2 companies are going to try to move to, quote unquote, Web3. But I think what's really important to keep in mind is Web3 is about a fully decentralized stack. It's about like fully decentralized applications on top of blockchains. And so Facebook will never be Web3, in my opinion. But I think it's great to see them kind of coming into the blockchain space. So how do you think his centralized uh, kind of um, structure would fit into this dimension of uh, full decentralization? Yeah, so I think over time it will hopefully change, but you have to think like Facebook has closed APIs. It's a lot about keeping the data to themselves. And I think Web3 is really about making the, tr the data transparent and open and, and private in some circumstances. And so I don't know if Facebook will be willing to kind of give up that control similar to a lot of like centralized companies. Yeah, exactly. And so I'm, I'm just wondering how is this confrontation gonna, gonna evolve? So we as a community, of course, we are very passionate. We are very determined to kind of uh, project this future of decentralization. But on the other side, there are like very big uh, conglomerates with a lot of uh, fi financial resources, a lot of power, a lot of networking uh, uh, power. Uh, how do you see us uh, taking the upper hand in this uh, confrontation, if we want to call it a confrontation, maybe you see it a different way? Yeah, well, I think people want sovereignty. Like, look at the rise of NFTs now giving artists kind of the opportunity to make a living in this space. I think a lot of the NFT platforms are centralized right now, but I think this is a great gateway into that decentralized future and you have to start somewhere. And so it's great to see Facebook kind of starting somewhere also with uh, Twitter, like Twitter adding NFTs, like verified NFTs to the Twitter platform. It's a great step in the right direction. Let's talk about Ethereum. So we see that Ethereum has been uh, uh, going through several technical difficulties in the in sense uh, that it's difficult to scale. Uh, it's, it's very expensive. Uh, we see some technical limitation uh, regarding Ethereum. We see Solana coming in as a potential competitor, um, but still Solana is uh, doesn't have the first mover um, advantage that Ethereum has. So um, how do you see this uh, competition evolving? Do you see Solana taking the upper hand eventually or do you see Ethereum keeping the, the status of the dominant uh, protocol in DeFi? How do you see this evolving? Yeah, so I don't look at Solana and Ethereum as competitors. I think like Solana is more of a competitor with NASDAQ or with centralized finance. I think when you compare Solana to Ethereum as a competitor, that's when it gets tricky because Ethereum provides a, a different use case, right? And it has great security. And as we see zero knowledge proofs and, and rollups emerge in layer twos, I think that it's really difficult to compete with Ethereum and so I wouldn't position it that way. Um, I think we're going to live in a multi-chain future and that future is starting to arrive and we'll see a lot of bridges and a lot of composability across chains. Interesting because you seem to have a very open uh, view on this coexistence of different uh, protocols of different chains but not everyone in the uh, industry right now thinks like you. For example, lately I interviewed one of the um, top uh, developers of Polygon who told me that, according to him, there is space for just one layer one protocol. Uh, and he sees it as Ethereum. He thinks that Ethereum uh, will remain the only one. And so there is a lot of this maximalism uh, around the space, I think. You seem to have a much different uh, view on this. So how are we going to make this uh, revolution happen if inside our same space there is uh, such a fractionalization, such a tribalism? 
and uh, going on? How, yeah. how can we solve this conflict? Yeah, absolutely. So I am, I believe in the multi-chain future. I believe that we will live in this interoperable future. Working with the graph, that's what we do. We provide indexing and querying to help with interoperability at that layer. Um, and so I think that it's great that there are maximalists, right? They hold the values for each chain. Each ecosystem has maximalists. Uh, and this is true for like Ethereum, Bitcoin, Solana, you know, you name it. And I think that they serve a great purpose, though I am not a maximalist. I, I appreciate the maximalist view, um, but I think we'll, we'll unite the space and I think we'll be stronger together and we need to focus on kind of the centralized powers that be instead of kind of the infighting within these communities. Last question would be your view on 2022. So we saw 2021 wasn't a great year. We achieved a lot of uh, important milestones. Uh, what are the milestones that you're looking forward to see in 2022 in terms of the development of the space? Yeah, absolutely. So I think we're arriving at a fully decentralized stack. I think in 2022, we will have this fully decentralized Web3 stack at the indexing and query layer, at the uh, storage layer, at the blockchain layer. And so we'll see a lot more development happening on blockchains and it will become as easy to spin up a, a dApp in the blockchain space as it is to spin up a website in Web2.